Hello everyone and thanks for joining me in this new video. Today we will use bricks and oxyprops to build Netflix. We will recreate the Netflix app homepage with this hero section that suggests a movie. And then we will have movie selections by category, either from Netflix originals or by various categories, trending movies, action movies, comedies, horror movies, romance, and documentaries. All this data is pulled dynamically through the TMDB API. TMDB is the movie database. And each time you refresh the page, you get a new suggestion. This is built using Bricks. And in this video, we will learn together how to query data from an external API and make it available for Bricks to display as dynamic data. The movie backdrop, the movie posters, the movie titles and the summary are all pulled through the API. And as we build this page together, we will use some code, we will use a little JavaScript, we will use PHP. And if you are not familiar with code, don't worry, we will see everything together step by step. So to start with, let's open a terminal and deploy a new WordPress website. Let's log in to our dashboard. And here we are in our dashboard. So for this video, I'm using WordPress 6.1. Bricks is version 1.5.7. And I will activate Bricks child theme because we will integrate custom PHP code. And I'm using oxyprops that has been converted to bricks props because we are using bricks. And this is my newest development version. And for my settings, I will not modify a lot of things except I will activate bricks props global theme. And I will remove Gutenberg presets. And now we are ready to go. So first thing we will do is create a new page. This will be my home page. And let's open Bricks. And for now, the only thing I will do is create a section. My section will have a height of 90 VH, 90% 90 of the viewport height. Everything inside it will be centered. And I will also give it a position relative because later I will want to position things absolutely. Inside our container, let's add a placeholder heading. And in order to have a page that's more than one screen high for now, let's just duplicate it. This one will be my hero section. Let's save. And before we continue, we will take care of our heading. So we jump back to WordPress and go to Bricks Templates. And we will create a new one that will be my header. It will be a type of header. Let's publish and edit with Bricks. So here, just to show you where we want to go, I want to create this header. You can see that it has a slight gradient. And as soon as we scroll, the background becomes opaque. So our header is readable. OK, so it's always at the top. When I scroll, it turns opaque. And when I'm back in place, we have the gradient again. So I will need a section. And my section will have a position fixed at the top of my page, it will have a padding block of two. As a reminder, padding block is a logical CSS property that sets paddings at the start and the end of the block axis. So for me, using a left to right language, the block axis is 
the vertical one, top bottom. Inside my container, I will add two images. The first one will be our Netflix logo and the second one will be our Netflix avatar. So let's start these images, starting with the logo. I will give it an object fit of contain and it will have a width of size 11. Now my avatar will also have an object fit of contain, a width of size 7 and for the borders we will add radius a radius 2 to the borders okay so now we want them on the same line on the same row and pushed on both sides so i will select my container and transform the container into a flex row Perfect. Along the cross axis, I want the items to be centered and I also want them to be pushed on both sides. So on the main axis, I want a space between. Okay, so now let's take care of the width of our side content. And for this, we will go to the theme styles and modify a few of the defaults. So in the element section, I want my padding left and right to be a size 4. And I also want my element container to be 100% width with no maximum width. So I just empty this field. Let's save and back to WordPress. I will go to my settings, reading. I want a static page as my home page and it will be my home page and now we can have a look at the front end and here we are we have our header that sticks at the top of our page when scrolling so now let's make things a little more visible and go back to our page home page edit with bricks and I will give my hero section a background and I will give it a background image. And for now, let's just use a placeholder image. Here we are. So with this image, we can notice a few things that needs to be fixed. The first one is that our header is not visible anymore. That's because we need to give it a Z index, a positive Z index. And then we will have to deal with the background color. So let's start with the Z index. Back to bricks, templates, edit with bricks. And give the section a Z index of layer 5. So this, this should fix the visibility problem. So here we are, it's okay. And now I want the gradient background. So I will create a custom class of C-nav and I will give it a gradient. It will have an angle of zero degrees. My color one will be my surface one with a 0% opacity. So let's make sure it's zero, completely transparent. And the second color will be my surface one. And it is probably not visible here because we have no image, but let's save and check our front end. And now we can see this slight gradient on the top with our navbar. And now we want our header background to become opaque when scrolling the page. And to make it uh, opaque, we have a class that is surface one. 
And this, this class will apply a background, a solid background, opaque background of surface one color. If I try this, go to my front end and refresh. My background is now completely opaque, but I don't want it completely opaque at all times. I want it opaque when I start scrolling. So I would like to add this class only when the page is scrolling. And for this, we will use a little JavaScript. So let's remove this class. We know it works and we will add a code element. And I will drag it at the top. I will call this one scroll.js. And let's edit this code. We will get rid of this placeholder code. We don't need it. And to add some JavaScript, we will include script tags, opening and closing tags. In the middle, let's drop down. And we will use an event listener. So to my window, I will look into it for the add event listener method. And this will take two arguments. The first one is uh, the event it will listen to. It will be scroll. And the second one is a callback function that will be called when the event is detected. So let's create an arrow function. Parenthesis, arrow symbol, curly brackets. And if you are not familiar with arrow function, that's OK. This is what we call an anonymous function, an anonymous arrow function. And just between the two curly brackets, we will drop down. And this is where we will define our function body. So we are telling the browser to listen to a scroll event. And when a scroll event is detected, to execute the function. And now I will have two cases depending on the position of the scroll. If I have left the top I want to add the O-Surface1 class that will make my background opaque. And when I'm back at the top, I want to remove the class. So I will use an if else statement. So if parenthesis curly brackets, then else curly brackets. I'll drop down. OK. And as a condition, I will use window dot to look into it, scroll. We are looking for the property scroll Y, and this will give us the scrolling position of my page. And this is greater than 100, and you can use the value you want. Then I will look into my document for my navigation element. So I will look for the method get element by id parenthesis and the id i am looking for is navigation and just after this we will have to set a navigation id to our navbar and when i have my element i will look to the class list property and i will add this is a method a new class and this will be O dash surface dash one. Okay, so up to now, when a scroll is detected, if the scroll position is greater than 100, look into the document for an element with the ID navigation, look into its class list and add the class O dash surface one. Perfect, and then now if the scroll position is not greater than 100. Well, to save a bit of typing, let's copy and paste this line. And the only difference is that we want to look for the same element, but this time we don't want to add the class. We want to remove the class. Okay, we don't have to, but I like to have semicolons at the end of my lines. 
In JavaScript, you don't have to add the semicolons. They are assumed to be here, but I like to have them visually. So now we just need to add this ID to our navigation element. So let's do this. Go to my section and edit the ID into navigation. Perfect. So now my query, my get element by ID of navigation will find this element because it has the ID of navigation. And for now, only the code snippet is visible and I cannot execute this code because I need to go. So let's save. And I need to go to my bricks settings in the builder access tab and allow code execution for the administrator. Save my settings back to my template. And now I have this toggle to execute code. Let's save and go to our front end and check if everything is working as expected. So I refresh. I have my gradient, slight gradient background. And if I scroll, perfect. The background is now opaque. And if I'm back on top, it's back to my gradient. Okay, so as soon as I scroll 100 pixels, the class is added to my element. And when I'm back, the class is removed. Perfect, our header is ready. Now let's take care of our hero section. So back into Bricks, now I want to edit my page. So if you remember, my section have three classes applied. I'll keep them. I have my heading, my heading will be an H1. I will add a basic text. This will be my movie summary. For now, I will just use a placeholder text. I want to change the font size to a font size too. But I also want to contain the width of my text. So under the layout tab, I will give it a width of 100%. But I want a maximum width of content to and content to will limit my paragraph width to 45 characters ch it's measured in ch similar as this one and ch stands for character height that's a css unit that's directly related to the character size so 45 ch will be roughly 45 characters wide so let's go for content to Okay, and now I want to standardize between the different movies. Some will have a short summary, some will have a long summary, but I want to limit this text to three lines, three lines of text maximum. So to be able to do this, we will use a utility class from the Oxybrows framework. Actually, we will use two classes. The first one will be an overflow of hidden. Okay, so for now this doesn't change anything, but now I want to give it a class of O-line. And it's not suggested because in my development version, I haven't registered this class yet, but you will find it in the next plugin version. So that's O-line-clamp. And then you give it the number of lines you want to limit. So in my case, it will be O-line-clamp-clamp. Three to limit to three lines. And as soon as I apply the class, you see that my text is now limited in height to three lines. And we have this small ellipsis character that's added at the end to inform the reader that it's only part of the text that's displayed. Okay, let's save. I will add uh, some vertical spacing to my container. So let's give it a gap of three. That's perfect. And now I want to add the two buttons. 
So I will add a div that will contain my buttons. This div will be a flex row. I want my items to be centered vertically, so I want on the cross axis items to be centered. And I will also give it a gap between my buttons, and it will be a gap of two. So now inside this div, let's add two pieces of text, two basic texts, and these will be my buttons. The first one will have a content of play with this small caret, and the second one as a content of more info with this circled eye element. If you don't know how to find those special characters, well, you can search for, for example, right arrow HTML entity, and you will find a lot of answers. Let's check this one. And for example, this is the one I used for the play button. Okay, so now let's style our buttons. And for the buttons, I will create custom CSS classes. So of course, there are button utility classes in Oxyprop's framework, and they are very handy to be used when uh, you don't have a, an idea of the styles you want to achieve. You have a very nice looking buttons, but as I want to reproduce Netflix buttons, I will create custom class for this. And first I will create a custom class that I will name C-BTN. I prefix my classes with a C for custom, and then I know that the O-something classes are from the framework. And C-BTN will carry the styles that will be common to both buttons. So this one will also be a C-BTN. And so I will give padding to my buttons. Size one, top and bottom. Another question could be, Cedric, you have a framework full of utility classes. Why are you creating a custom class where you could use uh, O-pad-bl1 for adding a padding block, top and bottom, and then a padding inline for left and right. And my button would have the class padding block1, the class padding inline4, and then other classes, and you end up with your component having three, four, five, six classes. And this is not maintainable, because if you duplicate your button to, to use it somewhere else, and later you want to change the padding or you want to change something else, then you have to come back to each individual button to change the utility class you applied to it. So if you create a custom class, you are not using utility classes from the framework, but you are using CSS properties from the framework, and then your component becomes maintainable. So on the inline axis, I will have a size 4 on both sides. Okay, let's give it a font size of a font size fluid 2, perfect, a font weight of 600, and I want to give a border radius, link them all together, of radius 2. Perfect, so we have shaped the buttons, but now we need to define their background colors. And this will be different for the two buttons. So let's start with the play button. And this will have a modifier class of C dash BTN dash dash primary. Here I use the double dash. And this comes from the BEM BEM naming convention, stating that this is a modifier class that modifies another class. And my button primary will have a font color a surface one. So now it's not visible anymore. But don't worry, because it will also have a background and a background color of text one. And 
find in my hover state, the background will still be text one, but with an opacity of 70%. And while we are here on the BTN class, let's get rid of the overstate BTN class. Let's make sure that my border has a style of none. And now on the second button, this one will have a class of C dash BT N dash dash secondary. The background color will be my surface four with a 70% opacity and uh, on the hover state it will still be my surface 4 but with a 40% opacity. Let's have a look at our front end, refresh and we have our heading, our text limited to three lines, our two buttons with our overstate. Maybe two things. Here we are missing a cursor with a shape of pointer. This is an easy fix. And the second one is here I have a short heading. But maybe when the text is longer, I want to limit the size in the same manner I did with the movie summary. So first, our buttons. Let's be back to the normal state, our play button will be a link and I will just use for now a hash symbol and same thing for the second one with the hash symbol and then my text I want to give it a width of 100% but a maximum width of header one. And we can see that the box reduced to limit the width of our heading. Our hero section is ready. We have the correct cursor. It's now time to work on our API call to make sure we can populate it with dynamic content from the movie database API. And maybe first let's have a look at what is the movie database. So let's search for TMDB and this should be the first result. And here it is. TMDB is a huge database with millions of movies and we can use its API to retrieve movie information. So you will have to sign up for a TMDB account. You see that I'm already logged in. So go ahead, create your account and then you can go to your settings and then to API. And here at the bottom of the page, you will find your API key. And this is the one we need to use. So I did blur my screen to keep it private because as any API key, you need to make sure that you will keep this information private. Even if this is not a paying service, it's completely free. So you will not be charged if someone else uses your key anyway, as this key identifies you as the author of a request, you want to make sure you keep it private. And if you have never used an API, maybe you wonder how to use it. So here you have an example API request. So you can copy this information, open a new tab, and you can simply pass this address in your browser. And of course, make sure you replace your API key by your actual API key from the previous screen. And if I press enter, you can see here the result from the request. So this is not something that's intended to be human readable. The server sent us back a JSON response to our request. And inside this JSON response, we have all the available information from the movie database for this specific movie. And this is what we will use on our website. Okay, so if you don't have any idea of what this is and how we will use it for now, this is okay. We will look at it together. 
So maybe I can show you what it looks like in a more readable presentation. So here we are in VS Code with the exact same information from the request. But now this has been prettified and it's much more easy to understand what's included in this information. So we see that we have images, we have uh, categories, we have the movie homepage, language titles, companies with their logo, etc. Okay, so that's what we will use to render dynamic content on our website. And before we continue in Bricks, we need to jump to WordPress. And we will use our child theme to write some code. So let's go to Appearance. And under Appearance, you have Theme File Editor. You will get a warning telling you that it's usually not a good idea to edit theme files. I understand. And here we want to go to our theme functions, which is the functions.php file. There are a few options that are already here. Actually, we don't need them. So we can get rid of them. And now we can start writing some PHP. So first, how can we, from this function.php file, create something that we can later use in Bricks? Well, we will use functions. So let's create an example function, this one just to demonstrate the way to pass information that will be later used by Bricks. So for example, let's create a function and we will give it a name of get movie title, parentheses, curly brackets. I will leave the parentheses empty. And this function will simply return a string of text. So I will use quotes, single quotes. This is the title from functions.php and the line with a semicolon. I can update my file and let's go back to our page, edit with bricks. And now with my heading, I can come to my field here and clear that. And I can either type directly curly brackets or come to dynamic data and say that I want to use output PHP function. It's the same. So curly brackets. Inside the curly bracket, you will write echo. Echo is the PHP command to output something on your screen. Colon, and then you will give it the name of the PHP function we just created. So our PHP function is get underscore movie underscore title. So get underscore movie underscore title. Okay, for now Bricks only displays this code. We will see in a few seconds how to modify this behavior. But first, let's save and check the front end. And you see that now my title is this is the title from functions.php. So we just created a function that returns a string of text and then we use this string of text inside Bricks Builder to render it to the front end. Perfect. So you have just seen the principle that will allow us to use in Bricks custom PHP functions. So now we would like this text to be the actual text and not only the code. So let's go back to our dashboard and to Bricks settings. And if you go to Builder, at the bottom of the page, you have experimental dynamic data and you can switch render dynamic data text on canvas. So let's switch this on, save my settings and back in Bricks. Let's refresh the page. And we should now get the title rendered, the dynamic data is rendered on the canvas. 
Okay, if I click on it, I can see my code. If I click outside of it, it is rendered. Okay, so now that we know how to render data from a PHP function inside of Bricks, let's create the functions that will get information from the API and make them available for us to use in Bricks. So let's enlarge again. Let's get rid of this dummy function. And to use the API, we have seen earlier that we need to have an API key. So first we will define a constant. So we will use define parenthesis single quote. And this will be the name of the constant that will be tmdb underscore API underscore key. And then inside quotes, you will give it your actual API key with a semicolon. So of course, you don't type your actual API key here, but you will copy and paste any information that you got from the API. You paste your actual API key. Okay. So now your API key will be available for your functions by calling this constant. When we call the API, we will need to send a request, an HTTP request. And for information, this will be a GET request because we want to get information from the API. And we will have to send this request to a specific URL. So from the TMDB documentation, we can find that the URL is this one. So I will create a variable, which is base URL. And my base URL will be HTTPS colon slash slash API dot the dot org slash three. This part of the URL is common to all requests we will have to place. And then for the request we need, so this is the rest of the URL we will have to append to this one to place the actual request. Here it is. So we will have requests for trending movies, Netflix original movies, top rated movies, action movies, comedy movies, horror movies, romance movies, documentaries. This information here is taken from the API documentation. If you dig into the documentation, you will get all this information to know where to place the request to which URL. And you can see that these strings of text use the constant that we did define earlier. So your actual API key will be stored into TMDB API key constant. And this constant is used as the key in the request URL. If you are wondering what is this syntax, this is an array. And this is an associative array where we define the key on this side. And it's associated with a value on the right side of the arrow symbol. Okay, so our requests plural variable is an array of names, keys. So my trending request will send to this URL. My Netflix original request will send to this URL, etc. So if you need some time, pause the video to copy this information and then we can continue. So now we will actually place a request to the API. So let's give it a try and create a function fetch movie parentheses curly brackets in between the curly brackets drop down. And first we will make it very simple. We will create a variable named response and this will be equal to a WordPress function that will place the request. So this function is WP underscore remote underscore get. 
parentheses and inside the parentheses we give it the URL where we want to place the request. So to start with, let's use this example request from the API. So inside single quotes, let's paste the request, the example request from the API. Don't forget the semicolon at the end. And you can either keep your API key for the example or remove it and then concatenate and to concatenate you use a dot in PHP the constant tmdb api key with underscores okay so this will place a request this will send a request to the api with our api key to get the movie with the id 550 and store the response in a variable named response. And for now, maybe we can just return. And if we return, we, if we just return the response, we cannot do many things with it, but we will use a function var dump parenthesis and inside the parenthesis dollar sign response. And var dump is a function that will make a PHP variable readable for us. So let's update the file. And now that we know in Bricks how to output the result from a function, let's go back to Bricks and maybe in our next section, add a basic text and give it a content of echo fetch underscore movie. Let's save. Nothing happens because for now Bricks doesn't know yet of this new function we just created. So we need to refresh it. And back to our front end, when we refresh, of course, it's not nice. It's not made to be nice, but we have a view of the response. So this means that our request was successful and we got a response. And inside this response, we have a body. And this is what is interesting because inside this body, we have the movie information. So let's give it a try. And instead of just returning response, let's return response. And as, as you noticed, the response is an array. So to access an array, we use square brackets and we want to access the body property and our body property is a string. So it's JSON data encoded as a string. So we will need to decode this data. So we have a function for this, which is JSON underscore decode parenthesis, we want to, disco to decode our response body. And this will give us the full response. So let's have a look at what is returned here. So once again, let's use var dump, wrap this in parenthesis. So we will return var dump of JSON decode of response body. Let's update the file and update our front end. Okay, so now we have, let's get rid maybe of the header. So we have a better look. Okay, so that's our response. It's an object with several properties. And for example, if we want the title, we will use the property title. And if we want the image, we will use the backdoor path. So first, let's take care of the title. So once we have our object here, between those two parentheses, 
Let's look into the object with an arrow. Let's dash and greater than symbol for the title property. We can get rid of the var dump because this should return a string. Update our file back in the front end. If I refresh, now I get the movie title. Perfect. So we placed a query to the API. We stored the response into a variable named response. And inside this response, we can go and get properties and their values to display on our front end. Okay, so let's improve this function to make it more dynamic. First, I want to fetch several movies. And I will pass this function an argument that will be dollar sign fetch URL. I will give it the URL that I want to query. Then my response will still be WP remote get, but the first argument will be my fetch URL. And to make our code more robust, we will also give it a second argument, which is optional, which will be an array. And in this array, we will have headers. This is the request headers, which value is also an array in which we accept a format, which is application.json. You don't need to memorize this code. That's not very important to memorize it. You can get that from the documentation. Okay, so we still get our response from a URL. And as you can imagine, the request URL will be one of these from our request array. And we specify that we accept a response in a JSON format. Then we want to check if we got a response because something can happen on our request and maybe we don't have a response or we have a bad response. So we'll create an if block, parenthesis, curly brackets, drop down between the curly brackets and as a condition, we will set that if and we will use a function is underscore WP underscore error parenthesis. And we will give this function an argument, which is our response. So the condition is if our response is an error, and actually we want the opposite, we want to check if we have no errors and to check the opposite, we use the exclamation point. So if the response is not an error, then execute the code. And we also want to add a second condition. So we will use ampersand ampersand to say end. So only if the response is not an error and 200 equals 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 triple equals. We check for a strict equality and we use another function WP underscore remote underscore retrieve underscore response underscore code. So when you send a request to an API, the API sends you back the response with a code and 200 is the code to say that the request was successful. So we want to check that there is no error and the response code is 200, meaning our request was successful and we need to pass our response to this function. So if there is no error and the response code is 200 successful, then we can decode our response body. So I will copy this 
inside my if block. I create a new variable response underscore body and this is equal to and I passed my clipboard JSON decode of response square brackets body. Okay. And now I want to make another check. I want to make sure that when decoding the response, there was no errors. So again, I will write an if statement, parentheses curly brackets. And as a condition this time, I will call a function that's JSON underscore last underscore error parenthesis. And I want to check if this is equal to triple equal once again and all uppercase JSON underscore error underscore none. Okay. This means if there is no JSON error, then I can return my response underscore body semicolon. And at the end, so if I reach this point, it means that either there was an error in the response or there was an error in the JSON decoding. So I can return there was an error. And as we want to check what we get for now, we can just add a var dump to wrap our response body and check what we get in return. Update the file. And for example, we want to get our trending movies. So we will create a function trending parentheses curly bracket and this will return fetch movies parentheses and inside the parentheses we can use our base URL dot to concatenate and request square brackets quotes trending. So what we are doing here is we are concatenating the base URL with the value of the trending key in our requests array. Let's try this. And here we want to echo trending. Okay, there was an error and there was an error because in order to use those two variables inside this function, these variables have been declared outside of the function. I need to call them with the key keyword global base URL and global requests. And let's give it a new try. And this time we have a long response. So let's get rid of the header. We get an object with the property of results, which is an array with a size of 20. So we get 20 movies and we have movies 0, 1, 2 and movies 0. We have the adult property, the backdrop, the ID, the title, the language, etc. So this time the request sent us a collection of 20 movies. And these are the 20 movies for the category trending. Nice. So a last thing we want to do is that 
we are receiving an object and we would like to convert this object into an array because it's much more convenient in PHP to work with arrays than working with objects. And to convert an object to an array, we can first specify the type. So our response body here, we can just place a pair of parentheses and specify that we want an array. Let's give it a try, update, refresh. And this time we received an array, but inside of it, the movies are still objects. In order to convert the movies into arrays, to is to give this function a second parameter of true. And this parameter will tell the decode function that we want to convert objects into associative arrays. So let's update and check the result. Okay, so now all our objects have been converted to arrays and it will be much more easy for us to work with them. Okay, and to finish with, to make our function even more robust, we can wrap this code into a try catch block. Once again, you don't have to memorize it, but you can follow along with me if you want. So we'll say try curly brackets and we will copy all these lines, cut it and paste it into our try block. So PHP will execute this code and if everything goes right, perfect. But if there was an error, we will catch it, parenthesis, and we will get, we'll catch the exception. And let's call it dollar sign $x, curly brackets. And then we can error log, print underscore R to print the error in a human readable manner of our exception. And the second argument is true to return the output. And then we don't need this anymore. Okay, so our fetch movie function is ready. So now instead of just requesting the trending movies, let's request all of them. So my function will be get underscore all underscore movie underscore categories. It takes our two globals and let's create a variable that we will name movies underscore by underscore category. And let's say that that's an empty array. So to start with, there is nothing inside this variable. And then we will use our request and our request is an array with several elements inside it. So we will say that for each element in this array, so for each dollar sign request as, and we will give names to the key and values. So for example, I will use as name arrow symbol URL. Okay, so that means for each element, I will have my name and my URL. And with this, curly brackets, drop down. So for each line in my request array, my movies by category, dollar sign movies underscore by underscore category and I will fill my array so square brackets and I will pass the name so I'm creating a new array my movies by category where the key is the name trending top rated action etc and the value will be my fetch movies function with an argument of 
base URL, dollar sign base underscore URL, concatenate with my URL, the end part of the request, dollar sign URL. Don't forget the semicolon. And then I can return simply dollar sign movies underscore by underscore category. And this should be an array with for each category the value will be an array containing the 20 movies for this category. So we can check it. So first, let's get rid of this var dump here because we actually need to return the response body, not a visible version of it, and add the var dump here, var dump, parenthesis, and let's go and check on our front end if we can get all categories. And I have an error because I missed a semicolon here, probably. Everything is okay. So back in bricks, this one is now get all movie categories, save, and refresh. And we now have a very long array of arrays. And of course, I missed a step because here we want only the results. So back to our code, what we return here is the response body, square brackets, quotes, results. Update. Update our front end. And here we are. Let's get rid of the header. So we have an array with a size of eight. These are our eight categories. The first category is trending. Inside my trending category, I have an array of 20 movies, zero, one, two, etc. Then I get the Netflix originals category with an array of 20 movies, etc, etc, etc. Perfect. Our request works as expected. Now we have made all our requests and the result is stored in a variable. So let's get rid of this var dump and let's store this in a variable dollar sign movies equal get underscore all underscore movie underscore categories parenthesis to call the function semicolon so now we have a variable a global variable containing all 20 movies for our eight categories. So what we want for our hero section is pick a random movie from the Netflix original categories to display on our hero section. So we'll create a function pick underscore hero underscore movie parenthesis curly bracket. We will use our global variable movies and we will define a new variable named random index because we want to pick a random movie inside our array. And this will be equal to a function that is a random underscore int. This is a PHP function that will return a random integer. And it takes two parameters. The first one is the minimum value, which is zero. 
Uh, remember that the first element in the array has an index of zero, and the maximum will be the count of our movies, and we will get the subarray Netflix originals. So we'll count the number of elements inside the Netflix original collection. That should be 20 and then minus one because first index is zero. The last index is 20 minus one, 19. Semicolon. And then I can return and I will return a movie that will be an array. And I will return my movies with the index of Netflix originals with the index of my dollar sign random index. So for example, if the random index is four, let's go to the Netflix original categories. This one, index zero, one, two, three, four. So if my random index is four, I will get this array and this will be the movie Stranger Things. Okay. So let's update the file. And once again, I forgot the semicolon. Here we are. Perfect. And now that we have the hero movie, we will get the hero image. So I hope you are still with me. We are close to finishing our API request and we are close to having everything needed to go back to Bricks and build the whole page. Okay, so let's create a new one function. Get underscore hero underscore image. Parenthesis, curly brackets, drop down between the curly brackets. I want my global variable of hero movie. So I must make sure that this exists. So just below, after querying the movies, let's create this variable hero movie, which is equal to pick hero movie. Parenthesis to call it. Perfect. And I will also need a new global. And this will be my images base underscore URL. And let's define it. At the top, I have my base URL and I will also have my base, my image base URL that will be this one and this is given by the tmdb api documentation because if we look at our arrays the backdrop and the poster that are images we are given only the final part of the url so we'll need to add this value, this final part to the base URL, which is this one. Okay, so now that we have this information, our get hero image function will return our dollar sign images underscore base underscore URL dot to concatenate with my dollar sign hero underscore movie which is the array containing my movie information and inside of this array I will look for the backdrop underscore path property to give me the full URL to this image. Let's save our file and I have an error on line 59. 
So let's make sure that my parentheses are okay. Opening, opening. Okay, this parentheses should be here because we want to count and then remove one. Maybe you saw it earlier and you were shouting at me in front of your screen and you already corrected the error. So let's update the file. And now this function get hero image should return a dynamic image for hero section. So let's check this back in bricks. Let's go to our hero section. And instead of our placeholder image here, so let's come back to the normal dimension. Okay, let's get rid of this placeholder URL and use curly brackets. Inside of the curly brackets, maybe I will zoom in. Let's echo column get underscore hero underscore image. Let's save. Okay, so the error is simple. I didn't use the correct field, so let's get rid of this one. Select dynamic data, curly brackets, echo, colon, get hero image. I want it to be full. And now we get our hero image pulled from the API. Let's save back to the front end. Let's refresh. And now each time we refresh the page, we get a new random image from our movies collection. Perfect. So let's finish writing our functions. So we have our hero image. We want to get our hero summary, our hero overview. So to save a bit of time, let's copy this one, paste it. Let's enlarge it again so that it's get hero overview. I need my global movie. That's not an image, so I don't need the base URL. And I want to return my hero movie overview. And now the last one is the title. And the title is a little bit tricky because in the database, the title is sometimes the title, sometimes the original title, sometimes the name. So we need to check for all of them to pick one. So first, let's copy this one. And we want to get our hero title. And we will create a new function that doesn't exist for now. But we want to return get movie title parentheses. And we want to pass as an argument our hero underscore movie. Okay, so now let's create a function that will get a title for a movie. So let's create, for example, here function get underscore movie underscore title parentheses curly bracket inside of the parentheses. I will get a movie to work with. And now let me copy and paste a bit of code. And you can pause the video if you want to copy. I use a switch statement. So the switch will allow us to check several conditions to check the one that is true. And when it finds one that is true, it will give us the title. Okay, so is set. This is a function that will check if a title exists for our movie. So if a title exists for our movie, our title equals to the movie title and we break so we don't go further if not in case and let me correct the typo an original title exists for the movie 
set the title to the movie original title. If not, in case a name exists for the movie, set the title to the name. If not, in case an original name is set for the movie, set the title to the original name. If none of these exist, well, leave the title blank. And at the end, return the title. Let's update the file. And now we have all of our functions. So let's get back to Bricks. And now we can set our hero heading to curly brackets get hero title and don't forget to echo the value we can set our text to echo get hero overview and now we have our hero section with a dynamic background image title summary pulled randomly from the api let's save and on the front end let's refresh and each time we refresh, we get the Squid Game image, the Squid Game title, the Squid Game description. Let's refresh. Now it's Stranger Things, Sex Education, Squid Games again, Warrior Nun, etc. Perfect. One last thing we need to do on our hero section is to set a gradient to have a smooth transition from the image to the page background. And to achieve this, remember at the beginning of the video, we did add a position relative to the section. So inside the section, let's add a div. This div, here it is, will be absolutely positioned. It will have a width of 100% full width, no maximum width, just in case, a height of 25%. It will be positioned to the bottom bottom of zero and let's define a gradient so it will have an angle of 180 degrees and for some reason when we set an angle in bricks this breaks the positioning so let's fix this I have my position absolute here but for some reason bricks when I did set the angle I did set the position to relative so let's make it absolute here and I will check later why this happens so back to our gradient at the color the first one will be my surface one but it will be fully transparent so let's make sure it's zero percent the second color will be also my surface one with a 50% opacity and it will be positioned at 61% and the last one is my surface one and now our hero image fades smoothly into the page background let's have a look at the front end here we are Perfect. And so now we need to take care of the movie collections. 
and this will happen inside bricks. So let's get rid of this dummy section. We don't need it anymore. So let's collapse our hero section and create a new one. And this one will be our Netflix originals. Let's add a heading to this section. This will be our Netflix originals will be a h2 let's create a custom class for our section headings so later if we need to change something we can adjust it only once and i want my font size to be a size with two make sure my heading is inside the container okay and my section, I want it to overflow my hero a little. So let's pick my section and add a transform of translate of translate y of minus 10%. And then inside my container, we will create our own repeater, our own query loop using code element and you will see that this is much more easy that than what we already did to create our query functions so let's open our code and get rid of this placeholder code and we will write php code so to start writing php we open php lesser than question mark php and we close php question mark greater than and in between we can write php so first we will call our global variables that we defined earlier so we want our global movies and we also want our global sorry we need a dollar sign image underscore base underscore url okay so now these globals are available for us to make our life easier i will also create two variables the first one will be category and here it will be equal to Netflix originals. Remember that this, the category, is the key of the category in our movies array. And the second one will be the image type. And we will set this to poster. And I create those two variables so that our custom repeater component becomes easily reusable for us. You will see this in a few minutes. And so now we need to loop through all movies in the Netflix original categories and to output the image for this movie. And you know that for an array, we have a method that is for each, and this takes as an argument the array. So for us, it will be movies, square brackets, because we don't want only the movies array, but we want the sub array inside movies, the sub array that contains the Netflix original category. So we will get into movies, the array that has a key of category. Okay, and in this case, it will be the Netflix originals. And remember, we say that we use them as a key and a movie. And then we open and close our curly brackets, drop down, 
and between the curly brackets, we say what we will do for each of the movies. So first, it can happen that some of the movies we get from the database don't have any image. In this case, I don't want to render it and I just want to skip it if there's no image to render. So I will create an if statement, parenthesis, curly brackets, drop down between the two curly brackets and as a condition, if you remember, we have a function is set that will check if a value exists in our array. So we want to check for our movie if the value for the key poster path or backdrop path, depending on the image type, in this case, it will be the poster path, exists. So it will be path. And just before that, we want to add our image underscore type with a dot to concatenate the string. Okay, so as our image type is poster, it will check if there is a property poster path. If my image type was backdrop, it would check for a property backdrop path. And so now, between those curly brackets, we know that we have an image, so we can output it. So we can echo, because this is the way you output something on your page. And open quotes. So we want to output an image with a class and we will come back later to style the image with a source and here we will need to add some dynamic data and with an alt tag and here again we will need to add some dynamic data and then we can close our image tag. Okay, so what is the image source? Well, this is our dollar sign image base URL. Okay, plus, so let's concatenate it with our, and to save some typing, we can just copy the movie image type path. Okay, we know that the property exists because we checked for that. So we can add this one. And what is our alt tag? Well, that's the movie title. So we can call the function get underscore movie underscore title and give it as an argument our movie. Okay, so let's save and let's give it a try, execute code. And of course I made a mistake. I have my curly brackets do not match. So let's have a look. So here I have a parenthesis. It shouldn't be here. Okay, and this is not correct. I should have an S. So let's check again. And now we have plenty of images. Look at the front end. Refresh. And now we have all our movies images pulled from the API. So of course this needs styling, but we have all the elements we need on our page. Okay, so first let's take care of our images class. I want my images to be size fixed nine. I also want them to have a border radius of two. And I want an aspect ratio of portrait. Okay. 
Perfect. So now our images have a much better size. And now we can take care of the code block element. So let's select our code element. And I want it, of course, to be a row, a flex row. It's already much better. I want my items on the cross axis to be centered. I want to separate the image, so I want a gap, small gap of one. I want an overflow on the X axis of scroll. I want to hide my scroll bar, so I want O dash scroll bar dash none. And I want a padding block of two. And I want a padding inline of four. And I also want to give it a custom class of C dash scroller. And my scroller will have a width of 100 viewport. max width that will be unset okay so now it extends outside of its container but as you see i need to move it to the left and to do this i need to add a size of four which is my padding size but i want it to be negative so i will add a calc parenthesis minus one asterisks to multiply and I will close the parenthesis. And now my container is back in position. Let's save. Check our front end. And here we have our container. with the movie images. Okay, last thing I want to do is to add an hover effect with a scale effect. So back into bricks, I will add, and I promise this is the last one, I will add a code element Try it at the top of my page. This will be my custom CSS. Let's get rid of this one. We want to write CSS, to, so we will keep the style. Just get rid of this one. And now we want to target our images. So I will write a component selector image that will target the image tags but with a class of o dash widescreen and image with a class of o dash portrait and this will be my scroller images curly brackets and i will give them a transition property on the scale property of 0 0.45 seconds. And now I want my image widescreen colon on hover curly bracket. And I want to give it a scale. And these are the new CSS properties. You don't need a transform of scale. You can directly write a scale of 1.08 and I will copy and paste this to my portrait image and just slightly bigger 1.9. Execute the code, save, back to our front end, let's refresh. And now when I hover my image, I have this scale effect.
And now let's appreciate the beauty of writing a reusable component. We have our section, so let's just duplicate this section and this will be our trending movies. Let's change our heading to trending and then back to our code. We just have to change the category to trending and the image type to backdrop as well as the image class to widescreen. Let's also remove for this section the transform. That's perfect. Let's save. And now we have our trending movies category. Let's just duplicate this one. And this will be the top rated. And let's change the category to top rated. And that's the new collection that's pulled from our API. So let's duplicate a few times more. We have the action movies and change this to the category action movies. And by the way, let's change also this one. We have our comedy movies, change the content to comedy movies and our code. Okay, let's change sides so you see the structure tree. This one will be the horror movies. And let's add some padding at the end of this section to give it some room. Maybe a size 15. Let's save. And have a final look. And I will use an incognito window to have the full user experience. And this is our finished page, our hero section with the image title summary pulled directly from the API and choose randomly. We have our header fixed at the top with the background that's turning opaque when scrolling down and back to this gradient. And then we have all of our categories also dynamically pulled from the API, the Netflix original with the poster size this over effect and the 20 suggested movies that's also dynamic. This is made with our custom repeater that we did code ourselves. And as you noticed, creating this repeater is not 
a really big deal. It's not a lot of code. And then with the same component, only by changing the movie category and the image type, we get all the other categories with this landscape widescreen format and hover effect effect also, and all of them are pulled dynamically from the TMDB database to match the requested categories. And this is how we can create a Netflix-like application with the Bricks and Oxyprops. And doing so, we have viewed a lot of interesting things together, how to use a little JavaScript in your user interface to add and remove a class to an element based on the scroll position. We have seen how to create custom PHP functions in our child team and call their values from the Bricks interface, either using Bricks dynamic data fields or directly using custom code elements. I understand this can be a bit tricky if you are not used to code. So if you have difficulties to get this to work, you can watch the videos again. And I will also create a GitHub repository where you can go and get the code I used in this video so you can check for any errors. If you like the video, you found it useful, please push the like button and subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed already. And I wish you to build wonderful things with either bricks or oxygen and of course oxyprops. And I'll see you in the next video.